All right, so this is the only communist MMA fighter I know of. His name is Jeff Munson. His nickname is Jeff the Snowman Munson. I'll show you why his nickname is the Snowman here. His nickname is the Snowman because he's so jacked. He looks like a snowman. Right? This guy looks scary. And and what would you expect if you saw Jeff the, the Snowman Munson? Like a right-wing guy? This tatted up, bald, white, giant MMA fighter? You'd probably expect him to be like a right winger or something nope he's a communist baby and he's from miami florida like the hotbed of anti-communism so this guy was really really good at the north south choke this is his record right here you can see he's got a bunch of wins by north south choke it's basically a choke that you get by getting a north south position where i'm like here and the other guy's laying that way and you just squeeze the crap out of their head and arm and it's a move you can only get if you're, like, insanely strong. And if you're a lot stronger than the guy that you're uh, competing against, with which Jeff Munson usually was. Um, so this dude's competed all around the world. He's got 60 wins, 26 losses, a total of 86 MMA fights. Probably has more than that. Um, not all of them were recorded. <laughs> He's fought people like Daniel Cormier, Fedor Emelianenko, Pretty much the who's who of the greatest uh, heavyweights of his era. Pretty much fought them all. Um, so famous fighter. Uh, great dude. And this is him discussing communism. First came to Russia, I was always enamored by the Communist Party when I first came to Russia. And I... They, you know, being like, like very famous as being an American and like wanting to be in the Communist Party, being fighting, finding Fedor and, mm. you know, his TV shows, they took me in right away. They brought me around and I, I was like, I knew I'd been used, um, but I, but I thought, okay, uh, what I'm going to get out of this. So I, I was like, after them, I was with them like over two years and I wanted them to open some schools free for kids. And I said, look, I'll, I'm going to come. You just hire a couple of teachers. You know, the salaries are so low here. It's not much. Hire a couple of teachers, open these schools in my name, and I'll teach at these schools once a month for free. Don't pay me. I don't want nothing from this. I just want, like, to give it a chance to kids. Mm -hmm. And they promised for two years and not over and over and over again. Um, and they brought me to cheese and, wise din cheese and wine dinners. And I met, like, the head of the party several times. I met his mm -hmm. family. I met like all these big wigs, all these big businessmen and all this stuff. And they just never followed through. And I, I just realized at some point there was no communists in the communist party. Oh, okay. And so I broke free. So to me, to me, comment. And this is really interesting. He considers himself an anarcho communist because of this experience. So he was with the Russian communist party for like two years and uh, didn't like the direction they were going. Uh, felt like they were more about their own political careers. Uh, really made it seem like the Russian Communist Party is close with the Russian oligarchs. Um, which, interesting analysis. Obviously, you know, you would need to see... Um, I would need to see the details of, of, you know, what he's talking about. And the Russian Communist Party got second in the last elections behind Putin. They're, they've really been gaining steam uh, lately. So this is an interesting critique of them uh, here uh, from Jeff Munson, who got to see them firsthand. Uh, he said they didn't want to build schools. Uh, obviously, building schools and, and paying teachers would cost a lot of resources. Uh, and I assume the Communist Party probably thought it wasn't worth their resources to open these schools in Jeff Munson's name. Um, so they were just trying to use him basically as propaganda, saying, look, we have this big, strong MMA fighter who's a communist. Um, but interesting critique there because he was originally with the party and then eventually they weren't going the direction he wanted. So he split with the Russian Communist Party. But uh, interesting stuff. I have some of the some of my, my friends that were really good friends so we can tease each other about this and they're like so anti-communist yeah. i know well i saw a video where you got like jumped by your guys you were like sleeping yeah. on a couch <laughs> in all fairness in all fairness and i'll say it to their face that's so funny to me they they said all his buddies are anti-communist and they like beat him up like 
dude, that is the story of my life. Like, not, not all my friends are anti-communist. Most of them ag agree with me when I talk politics and don't really know what communism is, you know, and if we have a conversation, it goes well. But, like, you know, being surrounded by wrestlers, by combat sports athletes, there's just so many, like, Republicans and so many people who don't know what communism is, and they will just, like, you know, like, be jumping on me and be like, you know, you commie, whatever, commie bastard, and <laughs> it's so stupid. But I relate to Jeff Munson. It's weird living in the combat sports world as a communist in the U.S. Yeah, they don't, they have no idea what communism is, and, and well, what does it yeah. And that's why but I ask because I can openly admit I have no idea. I don't know what it means. It just it just means the people have the means of production instead of having a business like for example, the United States, um, you have a business, and at this business you hire all these people. Like say you have a hundred people, you have a big business, you have a hundred people. Well, these hundred people do whatever forty hours a week of work. You don't pay them for what they make your company. Because if you pay them for what they are worth to your company, what they produce for your company, you wouldn't make any profits. Right. So in order to make a profit, you have to pay them less than they than they do. You have to like work school cards, market. cheat them, cheat them out of not paying them what they're worth in order to make a profit for yourself. So and he needs to explain this to other MMA fighters, especially fighters who are in the UFC. I don't think Jeff Munson ever fought in the UFC. But all the fighters are mad about fighter pay, right? They're so upset about fighter pay, and they always say, uh, pay me my worth. Like, why don't you pay me my worth? It's like no fighters in the UFC are being paid their worth. Not even Conor McGregor, the, the wealthiest uh, UFC fighter in history, is being paid his worth. He wasn't making his worth until he started his own business. Right until he owned means of production, and Connor argued for one of his fights uh, that he wanted in the contract. He wanted a stake in the UFC, right? He, which basically he wanted to own some of the means of production, right? So a company, because of the way capitalism set up, can never pay you your full value, and the UFC can never pay their workers their full value, the value their labor is actually creating, because they take home billions and billions and billions in profits for corporate oligarchs who don't do anything. Right, so it's literally people fighting in a cage, making absurd amounts of money for WME IMG, this corporation, which allows a bunch of wealthy people in suits to take home millions of dollars for doing nothing with revenue that is created by the by the labor of the fighters. Um, and and these fighters are always talking about pay me my value, pay me my value. Nobody in capitalism gets paid their value because there are these capitalist vultures who are taking all the value that we create and hoarding it as profit so they can live in luxury while we do things like fight in a cage so we can survive. Um, and, and I wish MMA fighters would understand this because with the way the UFC operates, um, it's so obvious, right? It is so obvious. And the UFC also makes their fighters public contractors, or I mean private contractors, so they don't even consider them employees. Um, so they, they don't get the regular benefits as employees, uh, like um there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes along with that so it's really disgusting really predatory really exploitative just like any any capitalist business but i just feel like the ufc and mma are worse because the fighters are literally getting brain damage so that they can be exploited to make billions and billions of dollars for corporations or corporate oligarchs who do nothing and then dana white's whole job is to tell the fighters to to shut up and deal with it otherwise they're being lazy and what's so gross about it, too, is Dana White will go to the media, and, and when a fighter complains about their contract, when a fighter says, I'm not being paid my value, I want more money, he goes there, he, Dana White goes to the media and he says, they're scared to fight. They're not a real man. They're not a real fighter. It's like, dude, you've never fought in your life. You've never fought in your life, and you're sitting here calling these people cowards because they won't fight in a cage to make you billions of dollars for not doing shit. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth, Dana White. It's so disgusting. Throwing these people in the octagon and, and calling them cowards if they won't go fight to make you a profit. As a comment, like, I, I don't I don't agree with it. I think that, you know, and everyone, like, uh, capitalists is going to disagree, saying, oh, we need business to, you know, produce. But um, I just look at the state of the world. You know, we have global warming. We're, we're running out of fish. We're, not a, we're running out of clean water. We're having droughts. We're having, like, all these 
like ecological problems um, all over the world, mm -hmm. you know, right now. And, 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 you know, having refugees coming from like all over the place and not having places because, you know, there's wars and this and that. And I mean, the world's, I mean, pretty unstable. Um, and, you know, this virus has just kind of shown um, kind of what's happening, you know, this coronavirus and what happened, like in the United States, you know, people are out of work and people are losing their health insurance. People are, and it's like, this won't happen in a communist society. Co communism is a, is a, is a, not a political theory. It's a theory. A it didn't even happen in China. China had by far the best response to COVID in the world and Cuba. You know, China and Cuba had a fraction. And, and this is when the U.S. was enforcing a vaccine apartheid and they had the economic embargo on Cuba. So they were not letting Cuba have the, the COVID vaccine, the recipe from these giant pharmaceutical companies, so that pharmaceutical companies could be the only ones to manufacture COVID. And so more people would die in Cuba and the U.S. could point and say communism evil. So Cuba manufactured their own vaccine. They said, okay, we don't need your, your corporate vaccine. We'll make our own and vaccinated well over 80% of their population now and had one of the best responses to COVID. Um, they had their government bringing food to people. Uh, people didn't lose their jobs because the economy, uh, their central planning, yes, they still have markets. Yes, they still have businesses in China and Cuba. They're not communists, they're socialists. Um, but with central planning, they were able to, to plan um, for the things that the market couldn't handle during COVID or the things that the market couldn't take care of. They were able to plan and take care of people's needs. Um, and that's not even a communist society. Um, and that, you know, a, a fully communist world would have handled COVID astronomically better um, than any of the capitalist democracies did uh, during the pandemic. It's an economic theory. It's an economic theory where people share and people are like, okay, well, what if this guy doesn't work as hard and, you know, he gets, a, mm -hmm. it's like, what do you think a boss is? I mean, what do you think like this people, a banker who loans you money, they're not doing anything. They're just getting money for nothing. This boss that, you know, like they call it the, whatever, um, these guys that own uh, Amazon and, mm -hmm. and you guys, the they're going to just say, but I mean, they're literally like worth like what I just read, $220 billion or something or, or Elos or whatever, Elon, whatever. Yeah, Elon Musk. Like, Twenty million billion dollars? Like, who, who's work, who does that much work where they can, like, be worth this much? You know, it's it's crazy. So um, it's just a system where people, there's no, I mean, when I talk to people here in Russia, for example, the old that lived in the USSR and live now, and live now, mm -hmm. so they're like my age or older, they, they miss, they all miss the USSR because granted some freedom, they didn't have all the freedoms, but that, that isn't communism. Communism doesn't take you over here. That's, that's something totally different. Communism meant everybody had a home. Everybody had transportation. Everybody, there was no. It's something like 75% of people who lived in the USSR in Russia now want to return to the USSR's economic system. And that's why the Communist Party got second in Russia's elections. Uh, that's why you're seeing Putin nationalize more of Russia's major industries and crack down on these oligarchs. Um, people recognize that capitalism doesn't work and capitalism was an economic disaster for for russia um and the soviet uh, the other soviet countries um who are now independent unemployment was at like 20 percent. starvation was rampant malnutrition became a thing homelessness became a thing prostitution and drugs flooded over the border i mean it was it was a humanitarian crisis caused by the the um, the return to capitalism, the shock therapy that turned Russia from a socialist country or the Soviet Union from a socialist country to a capitalist country, or I guess Russia, yeah, and all the other Soviet countries. Um, and, and, you know, it's the opposite of what we're always told. We're always told that they, they create, you know, they brought in communism. It didn't work. Everything fell apart. And that's why the Soviet Union dissolved. When in reality, you know, they were an extremely impoverished country. Imperial Russia was that experienced famines all the time. They had a communist revolution. They industrialized their country. They became a world superpower within 20 years. They housed everyone. They brought literacy from like 10% to 99%. Um, and then when socialism went away, uh, you had drugs, prostitution, malnutrition, all these terrible things flooding over the border. So it's the exact opposite of what we're taught in American schools. You know, if you're going to look at a, at a broad general sense, 
communism is what worked. Communism is what brought people out of poverty. Um, and reinstituting capitalism is what put people back into poverty. Everyone except for the oligarchs who who plundered Russia's public uh, companies after um, the dissolution of the Soviet Union. No homelessness. Mm. Um, if you lost your job because of something, they rehired you or retrained you to do a different job. Every hand had free education, secondary education. Nobody went hungry. Um, you know, these, and, and because you didn't have to worry about those things, there was a sense of like community and that's what they miss the most. It's not sure. that they miss so much. Um, you now, of course they miss like the security, but what they miss, they, everybody tells me the same thing. They miss having this, you know, instead of like trying to fight my neighbor for um, getting this job or find my neighbor to yeah. get this apartment yeah. or find my neighbor for this, like there was a sense of community because we didn't have to worry about these things. We just. So fascinating. So fascinating how our material reality, what we experience uh, economically, what we experience as far as what we do, right? What we do um, with our day, like under capitalism, we go to work, uh, we work for a paycheck and we use that to pay our bills and try and save as much of it as we can. And it's this individualistic competition versus your neighbor, trying to get more, acquire more goods. And, and that creates a psychology of individualistic, selfish people, right? Versus in the Soviet Union, not a communist country, a socialist country where they were trying to construct communism. You hear him saying there was more of a collective culture, um, a more of a sense of collectivism. And there's absolutely the same phenomena in China um, where they don't think of things individually. They look at things more collectively. Um, and, and our material realities and what we do with our material bodies every day um, affects our psychology. Um, it affects the psychology of an entire nation, of an entire society. Um, and it's, you know, he's proving it right there by talking about uh, the, the collective spirit that existed before the dissolution of the Soviet Union. We had time. We had a lot of spare time, not like I had to work two jobs and three jobs and all this other yeah. stuff. We, we were able to like enjoy ourselves, enjoy our families and put our family and our community first. And how often is that like? I know I'm kind of uh, like meandering all over the place, but no, in, in America, helpful. like uh, I, I ask you, hey, um, oh, tell me about your, oh, you have a son, hey, hold the, oh, he's 20. Let me tell you about it. Oh, he's got this, he's finished number one in this class. He's got this great job. He's making a lot of money already. Da, 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 like that. That's what you hear. That's typical. And that's, that's normal, mm -hmm. right? You don't hear, oh, my son, you know what? He's such a great kid. Like he, he's got a loving heart. He, he's, he's really happy. Back. He's, yeah, he's happy. He's happy. Yeah. yeah, like that's exactly right. He's high. He's happy. Like you don't. That one hit close to home. <laughs> Dang, and and I love my family. I love my parents, but and they know I'm a communist. But even them, you know, it's Eddie's doing this. Uh, Eddie's doing that, and they, you know, it's never, it's never the website that that they brag about you know it's never eddie's got this communist website where he's trying to change the world and trying to reach people with this ideology of of uh communism and anti-capitalism and anti-imperialism you know it's always eddie's a wrestling coach eddie's you know doing grad school which is great you know i love my parents but it, it just shows the kind of individualistic mindset that we're indoctrinated with it's not oh my son is a great uh, he's skilled at this, and this is what uh, his friends are doing, and here's how he cares for his friends, and here's these personality traits he has that are so great. Here's how he cares about the community. You know, it's what is he doing, and and how is he doing going to make him money and make him more successful than other people, and and you know, parents like bragging about their kids and seeing their kids succeed more than other kids, um, rather than wanting the whole community to succeed. Um, so yeah, that one hit me in the feels, Jeff Munson hear that yeah you hear you hear the success his monetary his like his what what he's done his, right. his successes his victories something like that. oh my son i know it's funny how we associate achievements with happiness or success and they're, they're not you know it's it's not so it's, it's the really same not. yeah that's right you just you hit it on the head i wish you i would that's thank you for saying that that's a uh, happiness like is he happy He's mm -hmm. happy, you know. That's that's not where we, nobody ever says oh, he's happy. Like how's your He's happy. Like nobody, yeah. you don't hear that, and that's yeah. and that's sad. And 
you know, I heard in the, I, I heard this also, and it made, made me think a lot is like, you know, before maybe 50 years ago, 60 years ago, and everyone's talking about the next generation. Oh, oh man, you look at four, your kids are like, oh my God, there's so many new inventions coming out. Oh, mm -hmm. what's the world going to come up with this time? It's like, like, you know, new places to explore, like going into space, mm -hmm. like, oh, like there's so much like uh, optimism about the future, like just so much what's out there. Oh yeah. my God, we got this new now. It's there's it's dead. There's no optimism. It's you're scared of what's yeah. happening next. Oh. I've noticed that change since I've been alive. I've noticed that change since I was born in nineteen seven or nineteen ninety seven. It used to be I almost said nineteen seventeen, the year of the the Soviet Union or the the October Revolution that created the Soviet Union. I wish that was when I was born. What a day. Um, no, in 1997, like, you know, people used to be optimistic about the future. We're going to space. What kind of new technological inventions will we have? You know, but now it's just they're just making the iPhone a different shape every year. Um, they're sending billionaires out to space in giant metal penises. And it's like, well, what optimism is there about the future other than that we're going to have ecological crisis, you know, or, or more uh, pandemics um, or more poverty, you know, America – Life expectancy in the U.S., the wealthiest country on earth, is going down. People are living longer because there's more poverty and, and more wealth inequality. Um, so that optimism about the future has gone away, but that eventually will likely lead to a uh, revolution of the masses, which can you know create a society that can give us the optimistic future. Um, so, yeah. Oh, not only this virus, but... Like, oh, well, we're going to another war. Oh, we're mm -hmm. going to have this problem. Oh, is there going to be fresh water? Oh, the, the global warming. Oh, like, you know, the, like the economy is yeah. really bad. This is like, we're too expensive to live these days. Um, are we going to have affordable health insurance? Is Social Security still mm -hmm. going to be around? That's, that's the, like, the reality. Like, yeah. we're scared of the future. We're not optimistic anymore. We're mm -hmm. scared of the future and hoping that I can survive in that. To me, that's uh, that's capitalism. And that's you know I want to get on a political tie right here, but that's sure. the opposite of what I'm talking about. Like I that you know under communism, where you you produce for need, you don't produce for profit. And that's the you produce use values rather than exchange values. You produce for the purpose um, of the useful character of what you're going to produce. How much use will that bring to someone? Which can't be measured. Right, you can't put a quantitative value on that, um, but that's the goal to eventually produce only use values. Whereas now we produce for exchange values. Um, if we could produce something that's incredibly useful, but it doesn't make somebody money by selling it, it won't be produced under capitalism. Capitalism only cares about exchange value, aka money. How much money can I take this product for uh, and, and exchange it for on the market? That is all that that capitalism cares about. Um, and, and, and that, that mode of production, that goal of production producing only for profit leads to all these contradictions and all these externalities like ecological crisis, like not being able to handle a pandemic, like insane wealth inequality. Um, so yeah, almost done here with, with Jeff. That's the bottom line. You, so you don't need to cut down 5 trillion trees or fish the yeah. ocean whatever or how pollute the environment so much because mm. you produce for what people need not for like all these items to make a profit how many how many they said for every, in america for every um five houses uh, that are empty like with nobody in it there's one homeless person so like it's five crazy. to one like crazy yeah. like you could put all you could put all the homeless people in a house house and yeah. there'd still be 80 percent of all the places uh, still empty. So it's crazy. It is crazy, isn't it? And we all just accept it. And we say, nope, this is the way capitalism has to be. We can't put homeless people in those houses um, because then landlords wouldn't make a profit. And that's more important than housing homeless people under capitalism. So that was Jeff Munson. Pretty well spoken, huh? Well spoken for an MMA fighter. Uh, let me show you this. This is also Jeff Munson. This is Jeff Munson when he was uh, still fighting. He's, I think he's retired now. But he was still fighting to make sure he could pay his bills. 
uh, still being exploited by the MMA capitalist overlords. Uh, this is a promo that Jeff Munson shot. Um, our well-spoken communist buddy, Jeff Munson. You like watching people get fucked for free? Watch me fuck up Mark Kerr for free on DonKingTV.com live Saturday, September 27th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. DonKingTV.com. I'm going to fuck him up. I'm going to fuck him up. I'm going to put these hands right around his face and beat his ass. You watch this live for free. DonKingTV.com. On Monday night, Masvidal allegedly punched a man. You like watching people get... So there's our buddy Jeff. Here's him cutting a promo. Seems a little bit different uh, from the guy in the last clip, right? The guy in the last clip was well-spoken, talking about communism, talking about his experiences in Russia, talking about the contradictions of capitalism. Uh, we see him here with his little red and black star. I'm assuming that's some sort of communist symbolism. Um, but this is also Jeff Munson. This is the other side of Jeff Munson's personality. You like watching people get fucked for free? Watch me fuck up Mark Kerr for free on DonKingTV.com live Saturday, September 27th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. DonKingTV.com. I'm going to fuck him up. I'm going to fuck him up. I'm going to put these hands right around his face and beat his ass. You watch this live for free. DonKingTV.com. That's always been one of my favorite MMA videos, like, for years. It, but when I learned Jeff Munson was a communist, it just skyrocketed to, like, the best video I've ever seen. <laughs> like, I love Jeff Munson now. Um, but when I heard he was a communist, the first thing I thought of was that video. I was like, Jeff Munson from Don King TV who goes, you like watching people get fucked for free? <laughs> like, why was... <laughs> I, I mean, that kind of kind of proves what Jeff Munson was saying. Don King TV was commodifying him uh, and, and making him act like he this crazy person uh, who screams the F word a bunch and is unhinged uh, in order to sell pay-per-views, in order to make a profit. Um, and that's why Don King, uh, that's why <laughs> that's why Jeff Munson's a communist today, because he had to film that video.